In this video we're going to be looking at virtual copies and the value of them for your final image, for the decision that you want to make for your final image. I've also put in the video a small colour masking tip and hopefully that's of help to you. But to start things off I also want to mention f-stoppers. I'm very fortunate in my photographic journey in that I'm one of the staff writers for F-Stoppers and I work with a lovely bunch of people that are phenomenal at writing articles. One of the other things that we get to do is we get to review various things and this tutorial by Pi is absolutely phenomenal. I really enjoyed watching the tutorial and learned quite a lot from it. I'll put a link in the description below to the actual article itself and you can have a read through that. Uh, I would recommend looking at a tutorial as well because what I've picked up from it has been very valuable in some of the edits and it's actually transferred across to some of my landscape edits as well. As you're probably aware, there is lots of photographers that produce tutorials for f-stoppers from the likes of Elia Lacardi and Peter Hurley to name a couple of them and they're well worth checking out and well worth watching, you will learn so much from them. How today's video relates to that is from the point of view that when I was recreating using Pi's step-by-step -step process, I was unsure in what I wanted the final image to be. I had an idea, but I was unsure in what I wanted the final image to be. So I created four different virtual copies that you'll see in the video. Hopefully you get something from this. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Virtual copies are a way of looking at different edits for your images, but one of the things that you can do is bring them onto the screen so that you can see all four at once or however many you have. And how you do that is select them all that you want to look at the screen. And then once they're all selected, you can simply go through them like this, but if you want to see them all on a screen at once so that you can make a better selection from them, select them all again, go up to view and go down to survey. What survey does is it allows you to open up and see all four on the screen. Now this is really, really useful when it comes to all different types of edits, whether it's portrait here, landscape product, because what you can do is you can edit them slightly differently. As you see here, they're quite dramatically different, but perhaps you want to bring contrast forward in one image, or you want to make it one image black and white and see how that compares to the rest. Now, it's a really good thing to do and it's a really good habit of getting into because not always the first time we edit an image is the one that we're going to use. As this would be quite a short video, I thought I would throw in a masking tip as well and this one's looking at colour range because what we're going to do is we're going to change the red of the cloak in the background to a different colour. So what I did was I created a mask and selected the colour range icon. And if you take this slider, you'll notice it selected the entire image. So I'm taking the slider right down so that it's only picking so much of the red. From here, I'm going to refine it even further using the subtract tool and the brush. And then what I do now is just paint over the areas that I don't want. Now I've sped this up slightly just to save you time in the video. But you'll also notice here I'm turning on auto mask and that's simply because I don't want it to eat into what I have already selected with this. Now it's time to edit it to whatever preference I want and I'm using the colours here and the sliders, the temperature and everything that I can to manipulate this. For areas of mist, go back into the mask, choose the brush and add to the mask and then go back in and paint on the areas that I've missed. And you'll notice I've still got auto mask selected for this. And that's again, so that it doesn't eat into any of the areas that I have omitted already. And just looking around the image to see a couple of areas missed up here, down there and in there. So now that you've done that, the thing is just to check your entire image and look back through it and just kind of finalise what you're wanting to do with it. 
I now want to change the background colour and the colour of the actual model herself just to get as near as I possibly can. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the mask that I've already created to do this. I'm just going to the mask, into the three dots and duplicate an invert mask. Now I am able to edit this separate from what I've already edited. And I can play around with the colours, try and find a temperature that I want, try and find a look that I actually want for this. And that's one quick way of changing colours in Lightroom. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully you get something from the masking tip as well. I'll be doing more of these throughout the, the rest of this year and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with this year on YouTube. Next week it's back to part two of the product edit. So thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.